a face that we are very grateful to see when she does make time for us and one we're hoping to see on a more frequent basis as the months progress. Kia, thank you so much for this. Let's talk about the WNBA postponing its games when it did because at that time you got the sense that athletes were done talking and it was time and necessary to escalate the method to messaging when it came to anti-black racism and police brutality. What conversations did this pause allow players to have at that time? Well, obviously we've been really fortunate to, before we came into this bubble, create a social justice council. And that is existent of a number of different players across different teams in our league. So they were one of the people that we had conversations with. Uh, on our team, we have Leija Clarendon who actually is involved in that as well. So it's easy to have those kind of conversations about what's next, what does this look like? What do we want this to look like moving forward? And a big part of it was making it a day of reflection and a day of affirmative action for us. So we knew when we postponed the first games, the next day was also gonna be postponed, but we really wanted to make sure in those days, we re-looked at the actionable items that we had on our list coming into the season. So the awareness on the Say Her Name campaign, the justice for Breonna Taylor and voting. And we really doubled down on those within those two days, especially in moving forward now throughout the season to really continue to work towards change. And it sent a very clear message. Players could not be the only ones relied on to pull their weight when it came to addressing and fixing systemic racism. Ownership also had a role to play in it too. What actionable items have you seen from ownership at this time? Joe Sai and Clara Wu, our owners, they're absolutely incredible. They have been since the beginning of the pandemic and taking care of those who work for us and, and work our game days to through the, the justice and the social justice reform that we've asked. Um, they turned Barclays Center into a place for the protests when they were occurring in New York uh, and a place of safety. And I think that's something that's been really awesome for us and in our organization, especially is seeing how they've stepped up, seeing the amount of money they've put towards social justice initiatives throughout New York and especially in Brooklyn to really give us an opportunity to use our voice and use our platforms. And they encourage that, which is amazing. But they're also stepping up on their end as well. And I've seen that through a number of different people throughout our league. What are you hoping to see comes next in the next months, years from now? Well, I think one thing is obviously continuing to have those uncomfortable conversations and whether that be it's coming up in your family life, it's coming up in your work life or where you are, maybe in school for some kids. Um, if something comes up and it's kind of doesn't feel right or it just didn't sound right, it's addressing that and addressing it right there and having a conversation around it. If you end up agreeing to disagree, that's OK. But as long as you've started to talk about it and you've started to generate that awareness. And then, two, I think the big thing we've been talking about here is voting. And not just voting in the presidential election, especially for Americans uh, uh, in November, but also voting in local elections. And that goes through everywhere, Canada and America, because that's really where the policies are made. So really doing your research and really having an understanding of voting and who you're voting for to help create justice and help create reform throughout the system. You know, it's been amazing to see and witness athletes everywhere using their platform to really help affect change. But I think so many people forget just how young these athletes are, athletes that are using their voice and making it very loud and very clear. What has this time, the last couple of months, taught you about your generation as it relates to activism? Well, it's taught me that I can be resilient and that I do have a voice and that no platform is too small. And I think that's something that's been really awesome to see throughout this is that with the WNBA coming together, we knew we'd have one enormous platform to work from. And we knew that was going to be comprised of all of our little ones coming together. And I think everybody now has really started to see that you can have a voice from anywhere, whether that's you being on social media, whether that's you being out in your community and, and the local areas that you're most comfortable with, or just being around your friends or being around your family. And I think that's something that's really important. And as a young person who oftentimes, you know, the young ones are told to go to the back, sit down and be quiet. They haven't been. People my age have not been quiet. They've been loud. They've been out there. They've been at protests. They've been all over social media. And I love to see that. And it shows the resilience that these, these young people have to really believe that this is for them moving forward. This is for the next generation. This is for the generation that comes after me, for my nephew when he's growing up. And I think that's been really fun to learn and see how many people have really stepped up. All right, I want to talk to you about the Raptors Celtics series. What have you seen from this Raptors group, in particular game four and their ability to tie up the series? 
I think they have a lot of confidence and that's confidence in one another, confidence in their own individual play. And when that comes to the forefront of any game, any team, that gives you an opportunity to win games. And I think it's also really started with Kyle Lowry. And that's the third, fourth game. He's really come out aggressive and they kind of go as he goes. That's the heart and the soul of their team. And I think he's done a really, really good job of being that leader and stepping up. We've seen throughout the series, Nick Nurse is going to play his big guns, big minutes. And they haven't backed down at all. They found ways to get it done, whether it be tired bodies. I'm playing in this season with them. Every other day is a different level of intensity. And they're getting it done both offensively and defensively. So I think that confidence, if it continues, it's going to be a dangerous situation. You know, you think about two-way players, players that can really help shift the tone of the game. I immediately think of a Marcus Smart for the Boston Celtics. Who is that for the Raptors, and especially when it comes to the X factor, if they're going to get past this round? I think I have to give it to Kyle Lowry. I think he does a lot of things that don't show up on the score sheet. He's going to stand in there and take a charge from a freight train, whether he wants to or not. He's going to get on the on the floor and dive for loose balls. He's going to be aggressive and go up against people that are way bigger than him. And I think that allows them to really play off him. And then I'll give it to Freddie too, because I love the confidence and the pace that Freddie plays with. When he goes in, the way he can finish around the rim with contact, the way he knocks down the three ball, that is a tough backcourt to play against it, night in and night out. All right, Kia, lastly, in order for the Toronto Raptors to advance to the next round and take on either the Heat or the Bucks, this will have needed to happen. They're just going to have to really get it done on the defensive end. There are a number of offensive scores on this Boston Celtics team. They're a high power. They move with pace. They play really well. But defensively, that's always where you're going to win championships and always give yourself an opportunity to play in a game, even if you're not scoring or things aren't going well offensively. And I think Nick Nurse has it with them that they change it up enough times. They can keep them off the balance, and Boston might have a tough time with that. Kia Nurse, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.